Hello viewers, I welcome you all to the talk on particle in one dimensional potential box. The objective of today's talk is to derive expression for wave function and eigenvalues of energy levels of a particle in one dimensional potential box of infinite height. Learning outcomes. After learning this topic, learners will be able to define the potential function for a particle in one dimensional box. They will be able to write Schrodinger wave equation for a free particle inside the box. Derive an expression for wave function and eigenvalues of energy levels of a particle in one dimensional potential box. They will be able to correlate the number of nodal points with respect to wave functions. They would correlate the number of nodal points with the respective wave functions. They will be able to describe the probability density of finding the particle in a particular state. Let me define what is called one dimensional potential box. Here we have two rigid walls A at x equal to 0 and B at x equal to A. These two walls are so rigid and the heights of the walls are infinity and the nature of these two walls are that they are very rigid, impenetrable. Now we consider a particle of mass M and this particle is left inside this one dimensional potential box. Now why we call it as one dimensional potential box? The height of the walls A and B are infinity. Let the width of the box is A. The width is so small compared to its height. So we can call this box to be a one dimensional potential box. Now we have considered a particle of mass M moving with velocity V. This particle is moving between these two rigid walls. Now a particle will be having energy. The total energy of the particle is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy. As the particle is moving, we can very well say that the potential energy of the particle is zero. But actually, what is the reality? The particle, at least for a fraction of a second, occupies a particular point in the space between the two rigid points. When it is staying at a particular point, at least it will be having little potential energy. Actually, we can say the potential energy of the particle is constant. But the particle is constantly moving. So, we can assume that the potential energy is zero. We are assuming, but actually very little potential energy, constant value of potential energy will be available. But we are assuming it to be zero. Now, the potential energy of the particle between the rigid walls is assumed to be zero, but at the walls, the potential energy becomes infinity. Means, the particle cannot cross over this wall and get out of this box. So, we say that the potential energy of the particle, when it is reaching the rigid walls A and B, becomes infinity and between the walls it becomes zero. So remember these two conditions. These are the two conditions we have to apply while deriving the derivation. So potential energy of the particle between the walls is assumed to be zero but when the particle is coming near to the walls its potential energy becomes infinity. So whatever I said is expressed here. The potential energy of the particle between the walls is constant as there is no force acting on the particle. The particle is freely moving. No force is applied on the particle. The constant potential energy is assumed to be zero for simplicity. When the particle strikes any one of the walls, it is reflected back immediately as the walls of the box are perfectly hard, impenetrable and of infinite height. They cannot penetrate, the particle cannot cross 
and jump over the wall also. So the particle bounces back and forth along the x direction with the constant speed v making perfect elastic collision with the walls of the one dimensional potential box. It's because the momentum and kinetic energy of the particle are conserved. We know the de Broglie wavelength lambda is given by h by mv. Now the wave function psi represents the amplitude of the de Broglie matter wave at any point. The wave function psi must drop to zero at the walls of the box because the waves are stopped there. Actually the particle is moving without any force but when it is touching the wall what happens? The zero force becomes finite. The rigid walls applies a force on the particle. So the particle is bouncing back. Now when the particle is moving, the matter waves associated with the particle also will be moving. So when the particle is touching the wall, the matter waves stops there. And when the particle is reflected back, once again the matter waves starts moving along with the particle. So here we say, psi the wave function which is describing the matter waves of the particle will become zero at the walls. Now the force acting on the particle abruptly changes from zero to finite value f within a distance of zero at the wall. What do you mean by this sentence? Particle is not touching the wall. So the distance between the particle and the wall becomes zero that's what we refer here a distance of zero at the wall so for the particle was freely moving there was no force acting on the particle so now the particle moves and touches the wall now what happens the zero force becomes finite why it changes from zero to a finite value particle cannot penetrate so what happens when it is colliding with the walls of the box now the wall abruptly changes the force on the particle from zero to finite. So the wall is applying a force. So the particle bounces back. We know the expression for force is equal to minus dou v by dou x. That means the potential gradient becomes the force acting on the particle. Now I didn't write minus sign here because we have taken the modulus of force acting on the particle. Now we have to carefully apply what we have learned here to this expression. We should have dou v or del v becomes equal to infinity as delta x tends to zero. What is that? In the previous diagram we saw when the particle is approaching and touching the wall so delta x becoming 0. We know at the wall the potential energy becoming infinity. Same way when it is bouncing back and when it is reaching the wall A, once again the particle is touching the wall so delta x becoming 0 where delta v becomes infinity. So the same condition we are applying here when delta x, when delta x tends to 0 delta v tends to infinity such that dou v by dou x has a finite value mod f there. So the potential energy v of the particle becomes infinite at and on both sides of the walls of the box. The potential energy v of the particle can be assumed to be 0 between x equal to 0 and x equal to a. Potential energy between the walls becoming zero but at the walls or outside the walls potential energy is becoming infinity. Thus the potential function is defined as follows. P of x potential of the particle along the x direction becomes infinity when x is less than zero and x is greater than a. So v of x becomes infinity when x is less than 0. v of x becomes infinity when x is greater than a. 
I hope now you will be able to understand. And V of x becomes 0 when the particle lies between 0 and A. The Schrodinger wave equation for the particle is given by dou square psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square of E minus V psi equal to 0. This is the kinetic energy. Total energy is E, V is the potential energy, E minus V gives you kinetic energy. The particle is moving, so we say the particle is having only kinetic energy and we have assumed the potential energy to be 0, where psi is called the wave function. For a free particle, V becomes 0, so you apply that condition. V becomes 0 between the walls, so the equation can be written as dou square psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square e psi equal to 0. Let us say that this equation is equation number 2. The mass of the particle is constant and h is Planck's constant is a constant, pi is another constant. We assume 8 pi square m e by h square equal to k square where k is a constant. So equation 2 we can write dou square psi by dou x square plus k square psi equal to 0. So, it is a second order differential equation. Easily we can solve and find the solution. So, for this equation, now we are going to assume the solution. Let the solution be psi of x equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx where a and b are two constants. By deriving Schrodinger wave equation, we took psi of x equal to a sin omega t. But here, we are not considering, we are not discussing the movement of the particle with respect to time. With respect to distance, we are discussing. So, we are assuming the solution to be psi of x equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx. We know sin function and cos functions are periodic function. So, which suits the best we do not know. So, we just take the solution as a summation of both periodic functions. Here A and B are constants. Now, the values of these two constants can be obtained by applying the boundary conditions. Now, we have to apply all the concepts we learnt about the one dimensional potential box here and solve this and find the values of A and B. Here the particle is enclosed between two rigid walls. We know psi squared represents the probability of finding the particle at any instant, anywhere inside the potential box. The particle cannot penetrate the walls. So, psi equal to 0 at x equal to 0 and psi should be 0 at x equal to a. So, when the particle collides with the wall, so for the accompanying matter waves moving along with the particle, when the particle just stops and turns back, matter waves also stops there. The wave function psi describing the matter waves become zero. Where at the rigid walls? Where are the rigid walls? One is at x equal to zero, another one is at x equal to a. So we simply say the wave function psi becomes zero at x equal to zero and at the second wall x equal to a. These are the boundary conditions. Now first apply this condition psi equal to 0 at x equal to 0. So this is the solution we have assumed. At x equal to 0 psi becomes 0. So you have written psi equal to 0 equal to a sin x is 0. So sin 0 plus b cos here x is 0. So we are writing b cos 0. We know sin 0 is 0. So, we have 0 equal to b cos 0. Cos 0 equal to 1. So, b into 1 becomes b. So, from this expression, the first term becoming 0. The second term has only b. So, 0 equal to 0 plus b or we can say b tends to 0. So, our solution we took two periodic functions. Now, by applying the first boundary condition, we are getting the value for b as 0. So, the second 
second term disappears from the solution what we have assumed. So we can write psi of x equal to a sin kx. Now you have to apply the second condition. You have applied psi equal to 0 at the first wall. Now apply psi equal to 0 at the second rigid wall also. So when you now our solution is psi of x equal to a, a sin kx. Apply the second boundary condition we get psi of x becoming 0. What is our expression? a sin kx. Here x becoming a. So a 0 equal to a sin k a. Now a is a constant. Sin k is the periodic function we have taken. The product of a and sin k a should become 0. So we have to find out which makes the result to be 0. Either a can be 0 or sin k a can be 0. Now if you take a equal to 0, what happens? Our solution itself disappears. Already b became 0. Now if you apply a equal to 0, then psi of x becoming 0. 0 cannot be the solution for a wave function because we are sure a moving particle is associated with matter waves. So psi of x, the wave function which is describing the matter waves cannot become 0. It can become 0 only at the walls of the one dimensional potential box. So, so what is possible? You can say that a cannot be equal to 0. So, only possibility is sin k a can be equal to 0. So, that the product a sin k a can be equal to 0. When can sin k a become 0? So, k a should be equal to n pi where n equal to 1, 2, 3. So, you know sin pi is 0, sin 2 pi is 0, sin 3 pi is 0, so sin n pi is 0. So from this we find out the value for k, k equal to n pi by a. So let us write the general wave function as psi of x equal to a sin kx. What is k? n pi by a. So, a sin n pi by a, yes. So, if you go back to this previous slide and see, there we wrote psi of x equal to a sin kx. But now, I write psi n of x because I say in general, uh, we have introduced uh, constant n here. So, it is better when n equal to 1, you can write psi 1 of x. When n equal to 2, you can write psi 2 of x. When n equal to n, you can write psi n of x. So, in general, we can write the wave function psi n of x is equal to a sin. In the place of k, you are substituting this value n by a x. So, we have found out the value of the wave function. But still, we didn't find the value of a. So, to find the value of a, you have to apply the normalization condition. What is normalization condition? The probability of finding the particle should become equal to 1 because you have left one particle inside the box. So the normalization condition, when you apply it, that is psi, psi star, dx should become equal to 1. Or if you write integral of mod psi squared dx should become equal to 1. So let us now apply the condition. We have taken into consideration only x axis. So integral of mod psi squared dx should be equal to 1. Now psi x in the previous slide we found that it is a psi n by a x. So you substitute that value. Here we have mod psi squared. So you find a squared sin squared n pi x by a dx equal to 1. So when you integrate it from 0 to a, what is 0 to a? These are the place where the rigid walls are assumed. So when x equal to 0, wall a. When x equal to a, wall b. So the particle is moving between the walls. So the limits of the integration becomes 0, 0 to a. 
So integral from 0 to a of a square sin square n pi x by a dx equal to 1. Now a squared is a constant, you take it outside, you are having this expression. We know sin squared x equal to 1 minus cos squared x. There is another formula also, sin squared x equal to 1 minus cos 2x by 2. That formula we are going to use here. Just observe, this can be written as a squared integral from 0 to a. I told 1 minus cos 2. So here sin squared n pi x by a. So this can be written as 1 minus cos 2 of whatever is present here. So you write by 2. So that by 2 I have taken it outside. Now this 1 by 2 also take it outside the integral. You are getting a squared by 2. Now you do the integration with respect to dx. So 1 into dx. So when you integrate it, integrate from 0 to a of dx becomes x. If you are integrating the second term. So integral of minus cos 2n by x by a becomes sin minus, so minus cos, so you are having minus sin and sin 2n by x by a divided by the coefficient you should write. Then the limits a 0 to a. Now you apply the limits. When you apply the limits a squared by 2, you are applying x equal to a. So you have written x equal to a. So second term, okay, when you apply x equal to a, here you have a, this a, this a cancels, you are having 2n pi. We know sin pi is 0, sin 2 pi is 0, sin n pi is 0, sin 2n pi is 0. So completely the second term disappears. And when you apply the lower limit, everything becoming 0. So now when you apply the upper limit, you are getting a squared by 2 into a equal to 1. So a squared equal to 2 by a or a equal to square root of 2 by a. So sin n of x equal to a sin n pi by a x. Yes. Now for a you have substituted. So by this way you have found the solution of the extraordinary wave equation. Thus we have found out the wave function of a particle in a box. So this equation 7 gives the wave function of the particle enclosed in infinitely deep potential well. Here we have psi n of x equal to this expression. When you substitute n equal to 1, this becomes psi 1. So that is the wave function associated with the particle at the first stage. When n equal to 2, then this becomes psi 2. This is the wave function of the particle at the second state. So like that third state, fourth state like that we can find out. So the wave function psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4 corresponding to n equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4 are shown here. When you substitute in the wave function n equal to 1, then psi 1 it becomes. This psi 1 can be expressed by a half of the wave. So between x equal to 0 and x equal to a, there are points where the wave function has zero value. When the particle is having elastic collision with the walls, the wave function stops there and we say wave function is zero. Now when n equal to 1, the wave function becomes psi 1. When n equal to 1, there are two nodes. Node means where the displacement of the particle is becoming zero. So when n equal to 1, you are getting the wave function psi 1 and the number of nodes becoming 2. Now you can guess, when n equal to 2, your wave function becomes psi 2. When n equal to 2, number of nodes must be 3. Look here, first node, second node and third node. So your wave function can be represented like this the half wave above and the half wave below so that it has 
three nodes here. Now you just observe when n equal to 3, your wave function becomes 3. The number of nodes must be 4. You see here 1, 2, 3, 4. So how to get the 4 nodes? Your wave function should be like this and another half wave. So that at the walls you are having nodes. Now when n equal to 4, your wave function becoming sine 4. And the number of nodes could be 5. Now you see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means 2 full waves. So in general we can say for a particular value of n there will be n plus 1 nodes. Thus a particle trapped in a box is like a standing wave. These are the standing wave in a string stretched between the box walls. Eigenvalues of the energy levels of the particles. By applying the normalization condition, we found k equal to n by a. This is k, this is k squared. Earlier, we assumed k squared as 8 pi squared m e by h squared. So, this is k squared. Now, by applying the normalization condition, we found k squared is n squared y squared by a squared. Now, we equate them both. Whenever you introduce n, you have to write the total energy as E n. Because wave function describing the motion of the particle is different at different levels. The first level psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4 like that. So, at each level energy also will be different. So, E n is energy of the particle at the n level. E n, you rearrange, you are getting n squared, h squared by 8 m a squared. Or in another way we can write, we know h cross equal to h by 2 pi. So, we can write this to be n squared pi squared h cross squared by 2m a squared. So, where n equal to 1, 2, 3 and h cross is h by 2 pi. You should be very careful here. n can take any value but you can't write here n as 0 because if n equal to 0, energy of the particle becoming 0. But the particle keeps on moving between the walls of the one dimensional box. So, it cannot have zero energy. So, the minimum energy what the particle could have is E1. So, N can be 1 and N can never be equal to zero. So, from equation 8, we could understand that the particle can have discrete set of values of energy inside an infinitely deep potential well. Thus, the energy of the particle in one dimensional potential box is quantized. So you can see now I have represented this is the first level n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 and here n equal to 4. So at the first level energy E1 becomes n equal to 1. So pi squared h cross squared by 2m a squared. When n equal to 2 squared becomes 4. The rest of the expression remains the same. So I can say E2 equal to 4E1. When N equal to 3, then E3 becomes 9 times the energy of the particle at the first level. So N equal to 4, you can say that when N equal to 2, E2 becomes 4E1. So particle, when it is in the second level, it has 4 times the energy of the particle in the first level. That we can just say that E3 equal to 3 squared, this becomes 9. So you can say that E3 equal to 9 E1, E4 equal to 16 E1 and so on. Okay, cannot have zero energy between the walls of the potential box. You cannot have energy level E0, your minimum energy level itself is E1. So you can simply assume that the minimum energy possessed by the particle is E1 when n equal to 1. That E 
zero equal to zero is not at all possible. This energy level is not a possible energy level as there is no quantum number n equal to zero. So E one is the ground state and is also called zero point energy in a quantum oscillator. Concept of energy levels which are quantized and not continuous as first discussed in Bohr model has surfaced in a natural way by using matter waves. In Bohr's atom model, energy of the particle should be quantized. But now we are discussing Schrodinger wave equation for a particle inside a one dimensional potential box. So naturally that Bohr's condition is realized here. By applying the boundary conditions to the Schrodinger wave equation, we just find that particle can be in the first level, second level, third level and so on. So energy is quantized. The, part, the energy of the particle could be E1 or 4 times E1 or 16 times E1 and so on. So what Bohr suggested naturally can be understood in by applying the Schrodinger wave equation. This way Schrodinger wave equation became very popular and successful. Probability density. Probability density is psi psi star of dx. Say psi square dx. Probability of finding the particle between positions x and x plus dx is given by the probable density and by mod psi square dx. We know the wave function psi. So psi square becomes 2 by a sin squared n pi x by a dx. So this value gives the probability of finding the particle over a small distance dx. And what is the probability of finding the particle within unique distance? To divide this expression by dx. So dx dx cancels you are getting p of x becomes 2 pi a sin squared n pi x by a. This probability density p of x will be maximum when n pi x by a becomes pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or 5 pi by 2. Okay. From this you find out at which point you can find the particle. So x becomes equal to this pi, this pi cancels. So a by 2n, 3a by 2n or 5a by 2n. Let us look at this diagram. When n equal to 1, x equal to a by 2. n takes up the value of 1. You can find the particle at a by 2. a is the width of the box. So a, a by 2 at the, at the midpoint. We know wherever the amplitude is maximum, you can find the particle. n equal to 2. So only at 2 possible places you can find the particle. Now you see what are the places a by 4 or 3a by 4. You can see if this if you take 1, this is 1 fourth, this is half and this is 3 fourth. n equal to 2 then the particle cannot be at both places. It could be here or it could be there. I hope you understand. When you apply n equal to 2, the particle, the probability of I think the particle could be here or here. This value is a by 4 or this value is 3a by 4. If you take the entire distance as 1, this is 0, this is 1 fourth, half, 3 fourth and the full. Next when you take n equal to 3, the particle could be either here or here or here. You can see x equal to a by 6 or 3a by 6 or 5a by 6. For n equal to 1, you have 1 half way. When n equal to 2, you have 1 half way, another half way. Actually, wave function picturization, we, you, you would have kept the wave function to be like this. But here, probability density is psi squared. So, the negative part is converted into this way. So, you are having a full way, 1 half way and another half way. When n equal to 3, 1 and a half way half, half and another half. So this two halves makes one, one and a half way. When n equal to four, you can see two full waves. So when n equal to four, 
you can substitute and find the value you can find the particle here here or here or here thus the quantum mechanical results vary drastically from classical mechanical results in classical mechanics scientists believe that the particle could be anywhere anywhere between the walls of the potential box but quantum mechanical treatment we found that particle could be at certain levels only it cannot occupy the entire space between the walls of the box it can be at certain levels so the wave function could be certain only the energy should be quantized that's way so classically we say if the particle could be anywhere but quantum mechanically you say that it could be here or in this level like this so that's the quantum mechanical results very very different from classical mechanical results now let us discuss some problems if we are able to solve the problems very clearly it is indicating that you have understood the concept now find the least energy of an electron moving in an infinitely high potential box of width 1 armstrong unit given mass of the electron as 9.11 into 10 power minus 31 kg and h planck's constant equal to 6.63 into 10 power minus 34 joule second problem is given to you a clue word is given find the least energy so today we derived an expression for the energy of the particle at different levels and we clearly said a particle could have least energy only at the first stage so simply in the energy expression you substitute n equal to 1 and get the expression for energy e n equal to n square h square by 8 m a square where n equal to 1 to 3 we know when n equal to 1 energy possessed by the particle is least so you substitute n equal to 1 and substitute the values here a width is given as 1 armstrong unit 1 armstrong unit means 1 into 10 power minus 10 meter so substitute planck constant value mass value and the width here you can find out what is the energy of the particle it comes out to be 60.31 into 10 power minus 19 joules how to convert energy from joules to electron volts simply you divide this expression by the charge of the electron charge of the electron is 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 so you find that the energy of the electron is 37.65 electron volts next let us do one more problem a particle is moving in one dimensional potential box of width 25 armstrong unit calculate the probability of finding the particle within a distance of 5 armstrong unit at the center of the box when it is in its state of least energy almost all the three concepts we are going to relate by this problem so we have to solve it now you know psi n of x because probability you are going to find out probability is p of x dx is equal to mod psi square dx so you must know what is psi so psi n of x is equal to square root of 2 pi a sin n pi x by a now the particle will be in the state of least energy when n equal to 1 so substitute when n equal to 1 You are getting psi of x equal to square root of 2 pi a sine pi x by a. At the center of the box, x equal to a by 2. The probability of finding the particle is now you substitute where x is there. X is equal to a by 2. 2 pi a sine squared sine squared. You are writing so you are having pi a by 2 by a. This a this a cancels. You are having only pi by 2. We know sine pi by 2 is 1. So equal to two pi a. The probability of finding the particle over the distance delta x is given by p of psi of x squared delta x. So p of x is two pi a. So two pi a delta x. 
Now delta x we know it is 5 Armstrong unit and you know the width of the box. You substitute, you will be finding the value as 0.4. So I hope you have understood this problem. The next problem is an electron is in infinite square well of width 2.5 into 10 power minus 10 meter. Calculate the lowest three permissible quantum energies the electron can have. Okay, an equal to n squared, h squared by 8 m a squared. The particle given is electron. Okay, and the width a is given. Mass of the particle is not given because the particle is electron. We know mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg. Now n equal to 1 if you substitute. Your expression becomes E1 equal to h squared by 8 m a squared. Now substitute all the values. When you simplify, you are getting the energy value to be this. You can find out in terms of electron volts. Simply divide it by 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. So you are getting the value 6.031. Your problem is find out the lowest three permissible quantum energies. So you have found out E1 in terms of electron volts. You know E2 is 4 times E1. Just multiply it by 4. E3 is 9 times E1. E4 is 16 times E1. But you are asked to find out the first 3 levels only. Just by substituting. E2 is 4 times. E3 is 9 times. So you can find out the values. This nicely you can solve this problem. I want to introduce one more interesting problem. With this I will conclude. An electron is confined to move between two rigid walls separated by 10 power minus 9 meter. So this is the width of the box. Find the de Broglie wavelength representing the first three allowed energy states of the electron. This is another exemplary problem. Why I say it is a very nice problem. This problem tells how Stardinger wave is connected to the de Broglie waves. Okay. Shall we solve it? Yes. What we have to do? We know that the to and fro motion of the electron between the rigid walls forms stationary wave pattern with the nodes at the walls. So the width of the box must contain whole multiple of de Broglie half wavelengths. So you can simply say the width A becomes n times the half wavelength of de Broglie wave. This, this formula no way I taught. This is coming from your understanding of the present derivation. At the end we found out probability of finding the particle in the potential box. We found at the first level probability of finding the particle is at x equal to a by 2. At the second level 2 positions. So 2 half waves. At the third level 3 half waves. Fourth level 4 half waves. So at the nth level. So entire width of the box in terms of nth level if you write. It is n times the half wavelengths where n equal to 1, 2, 3. Now you are asked to find out the first three allowed energy levels only. From this formula you have written lambda equal to 2a by n. Substitute n equal to 1 and the given values. A value is 10 power minus 9 meter. This is uh, somewhat, we are familiar with the 10 power minus 10. So what you are doing, you are just multiplying and dividing by 10. So 10 into 10 power minus 10 so that you can express it in terms of Armstrong unit. So n equal to 1, you are substituting all these values and you are getting this expression. n equal to 1, 2 into 10 Armstrong unit. So you are getting 20 Armstrong unit. Next one, what do you say? What is lambda 2? 2 into 10 by 2. Why? What is the formula? Just have a look at Lambda equal to 2a by n. When you keep n equal to 1, it is 2a. When n equal to 2, then you are getting this expression. Lambda 2 equal to 2a by n equal to 2a. 
two two cancels you are getting ten Armstrong unit. Lambda three means lambda three means n becomes three, so two into ten by three equal to six point six seven. So you can find out lambda four, lambda five like that. So at different levels you have found out what is the d broadly wavelength. I hope you have understood each and every step of the derivation and the concepts given. Thank you all.